Hello AP Calculus students, this is Mr. McAllen and today we're going to just do a ref refresher on the closed interval method. Now, the closed interval method is a method to find the absolute maximum and minimum value of a function on a closed interval. And the interval here we're defining to be like from a value of A to value of B. Typically, these values will be from one, uh, well, like from 3 to 5 or from pi to 2 pi. Um, so A to B is just generic. We want to first, in order to do this, you first have got to find the values of the function at the function's critical points. So the critical points are, just to make sure we remember this, um, the critical points are where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative does not exist. Now, if I draw a generic function, um, you can see that uh, when I make the interval from a to let's call this value b that we have uh, the two types of critical points within the interval and that the places that we want to check for the um, maximum value or the minimum value is either at the endpoints because those could be where we have a highest and lowest value the highest and lowest value could also be at the critical points that are equal to zero or where the critical point where the derivative at this cusp um, doesn't exist. So what we want to do is basically we want to construct a table of values and on the table of values we're going to put our um, I'm going to write x sub a and uh, x sub b and those would stand for my endpoint values at the uh, endpoint A and endpoint B. And I want to also put my critical point values. So I'm going to write x, c sub 1, c sub 2, and c sub 3 because we have, you know, three critical, actually four critical values. So I should have another spot. But you get the idea. So I should evaluate all of these um, critical points along with evaluating my endpoints to find out where the maximum and minimum value of my function are. So let's do an example. The example says find the absolute extreme values for the function and I gave a rational function because I figured in this case you know we, it, it would be a little bit easier or a little bit more difficult than a typical easy problem we could throw at you. So the first thing I do is I'm just going to construct my table to remind myself that I have to check the endpoint values. And I'll put negative 2 and I'll put 2 on there. I might need some more space in between them depending on how many critical points I get from the derivative. I take the derivative. Now because it's a quotient rule, I'm going to take the, uh, remember it's u prime v minus v prime u all over v squared. So my derivative is going to be of the form, um, I'll have 1 times x squared plus 1 minus the derivative of the bottom, which would be 2x um, times uh, x, which is the u part, all over um, x squared plus 1 squared. I'm going to simplify the numerator. So I'm going to have x squared plus um, 1 minus 2x squared. And then I'm going to I'll put that over x squared plus 1 squared. So most of this work you, you, we've done in class, and you should know how to do this. Um, you know how to take the derivative. We've demonstrated that, and we've proved to ourselves that we're pretty good at taking the derivatives. So, uh, when we, so now to find the critical points for this function, let me finish simplifying that. Negative x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. Um, to find the derivative or the critical points of this derivative, um, to find the zeros where f prime of x is equal to zero, that's where you set the numerator equal to zero. Um, so we've worked on this in the past, but I'm just saying for everyone's set the numerator equal to zero to find the zeros of the rational function or the rational uh, function derivative and to find the critical points where f of x uh, does not exist, you set the denominator equal to zero and try to solve that. So let me first solve um, that problem. Okay, so 
Um, I'm going to take the top and set it to zero. Oops. Let's like make sure I'm writing here. I'm going to take the top and set that to equal zero. Negative x squared plus one is set to zero. That means x squared equals one. That means I have um, two critical point values. Take the square root of both sides, uh, plus or minus one. So I have two critical point values so far. So I'm going to put negative one and positive one. So I've got four values to check. And if I try to set the bottom equal to zero to find out where it doesn't exist, um, x squared plus one squared, when you set that to zero, um, basically square root both sides of x squared plus one equals zero. And then x squared equals negative one, and this has no solution. Because there's no number that you could square in the real number system. And get a negative. So, and uh, in our uh, calculus that we're working with, where it's um, all real numbers based, so we're not going to be looking for imaginary roots. Okay, so now we've got to go back to the table and fill in the values. Now, here's a big thing that people will do all the time. They'll accidentally plug in these values into the derivative equation, and we don't care what the derivative value is. We want to know what the function value is at the endpoints and at the critical points. So, I'm going to plug... Um, negative 2 into this function. I'll get negative 2 over um, negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1, so I have negative 2 bits. Um, the next one I'll plug negative 1 in. I'll have negative 1 over negative 1 squared is 1, so it'll be negative 1 half. I'll plug in now positive 1, so I'm going to get 1 over 2, and I'm assuming you guys are all good at plugging values into the function, so um, and now I'm going to plug 2 in, and I'm going to get 2 over 5. So clearly, um, uh, and so here decimal-wise, this is 0 0.4, this is 0 0.5, this is negative 0 0.5, and this is negative 0.4. My max values for this function on this domain, this closed interval, this is my absolute max, and this is my absolute min. And you know how I love to use Desmos. I'm going to just uh, put this function into Desmos and show that that's where on that closed interval we get those values. So hopefully, um, hopefully you can still see me working here. I'm at the computer now. And um, let me go to Desmos. So we have uh, x divided by x squared plus 1. Oops, make sure I type correctly. Plus 1. And we can see our function. And now I'm going to, um, this is a neat thing about Desmos, so using curly brackets, um, I can shut off the uh, domain. So I set it from negative 2, curly brackets. I'm doing this on Desmos, so you also see uh, the ability, you have the ability to do that. I do less than, and then I type equal after. It makes less than or equal to x. And I'm going to do less than equal again, and I get a closed uh, interval for this function. I'm going to zoom in on it and I just have to scroll across with the um, as you can see here I can see look here's my max value at 1 1 half and here's the endpoint value at 2 comma 0.4 pretty slick and then over here you can see my min value and my um, other endpoint value so again uh, Desmos you've done it again I love using this tool to verify stuff we do in calculus, which is done algebraically. And now we can also show it graphically. But first, try the algebra first. And if you get stuck, look and see what the graphical picture looks like. I hope this video has helped you understand the closed interval method. And um, the next video in the sequence will be on the mean value theorem. Um, and I might put a video up on uh, how to do closed interval method with a piecewise defined function. So anyway, I look forward to hearing your comments or reading your comments. Or uh, if you want to send me an email, just to let me know if you have any questions or things you need clarified. Take care.